Hello, I'm Rich Finelli, and welcome to the eighth section of Mastering CSS, Workflow for High DPI Devices. Retina devices are now almost the default for Apple computers, tablets, and phones. And the word retina is actually trademarked by Apple for computer equipment and is their branded way of describing double density screens and devices. I'm going to use the word retina to describe any device made by Apple or otherwise that has a high density display. Everything on a retina device is sharper and crisper because there are nearly four times the pixels. For every CSS pixel, there are now four device pixels, allowing for much higher quality displays. The downside is that our images we've used so far are actually not going to look so good on a retina device because we haven't accounted for higher density displays. In this section, Workflow for High DPI Devices, I'll go over a number of techniques for images to account for retina. This includes making images twice the size, using JavaScript to serve 2x images to retina devices and 1x images to normal devices, as well as a hybrid approach using 1.5x images. We'll also look into the CSS involved in serving retina background images and finally using SVG to account for retina. This first video is on 2x images, or twice the width and twice the height images. The basic idea is to start with or make the image twice the width and height that we actually need. We'll then add that image to our HTML. Then we'll use CSS to constrain the image to the actual size it will be displayed on screen. The way I like to do this is the same way I like to handle flexible images in responsive design. I like to make sure that images will have a containing element with a set width and height value. Then I make sure the image itself has a max width set to 100%. So both of those things are already in place. All my images typically have a container, and in the CSS, all my images have a max width set to 100%. So let's get started with the raster images on the Shark Movies page. All right, let me inspect this element. We can see that these images are 200 by 200 pixels. Our goal is to replace these with images that are 400 by 400 pixels. I've already created three images that are identical to the original images except they are larger and they are suffixed with the at2x.jpg to signify that these are the retina versions. Switching over to the HTML, I'll add in at2x to the image file name for all three images. And I'll save that. Go over to the browser and I'll refresh it. And looking at this JAWS image, we really don't see any noticeable difference. However, a quick inspection shows the at2x image is being served, but it's being constrained to a size of 200 by 200. So you can see the natural is 400 by 400, but it's showing as 200 by 200. Because of our foundation of responsive design, the immediate containing element dot figure already has a width set of 23.9583 repeating percent which is equal to 200 pixels in the website's widest context. If I remove that width now, you can see the image blows up to its actual size, 400 by 400. So it's the containing element along with, now if I put that back, along with the max width set to 100%, if I remove that, so you can see the image is no longer constrained. The parent element has overflow set to hidden, which is why the image isn't getting any wider than 23.95%. So let's refresh that again and have it snap back to where we want it. Now, how do we know that the image is going to look good on a retina device? Best thing to do is test on a retina device. But we can also cheat a little bit and increase Chrome zoom to 200%. So first, let's set this width to 200 pixels, and then let's Go to Chrome and let's say you're now going to be 200%. So we can see at 200%, the image is still very, very crisp. And this is kind of simulating a retina device. So now let's kind of go to this image and let's remove the at 2x. And now you can see the non retina version of the image is being served and you can see how it gets pixelated. So it's not as crisp, it's not as clear. So that's what it would look like on a retina device if we weren't serving the retina version, but if we serve the 2x version, now it looks very crisp. 
we can reset that and refresh that. And now we're looking pretty good. So not bad really to get your images retina ready. Well, if it were only that easy. It turns out that making your images twice the height and twice the width really makes them about three to four times bigger than their 1x counterparts. So if you look at this JAWS image, the original is 28K, the 2x version, the double density version, is 107K. That's four times as large. So in conclusion, this is just the beginning of preparing for the Retina Web. Our biggest issue right now is we are serving a huge retina size image to all devices, even those that aren't retina. So that's extra download and page weight to sites that won't get any benefit from it, which is not very responsible. In the next video, we'll use JavaScript to make sure retina devices receive the 2x version and non-retina devices only get the 1x version.